Continuing Arc 2. If you're confused, I'm going to leave a link in the description and in the card with the playlist so you can go watch or rewatch whatever you need. Uh, we ended last video with Subaru waking up after dying, so I'm just going to jump in at that point. Subaru runs away, extremely distressed. He knows what happened, but doesn't know why. All the work he's put in, the connection he's made with everyone in the manor, the date that Amelia promised, all of it, gone. He ducks into the forbidden library to hide and sits on the floor while trying to catch his breath. Beatrice berates him for barging in again. Subaru starts to relax while listening to her complain. The fact that your attitude never changes calms me down, he says, as he gets up to leave. Only an ultimate pervert will be calmed by verbal abuse, I suppose, she states as Subaru opens the door. Those quotes aren't necessary for the story, but they are funny. <laughs> the novel's going into a little more detail on his thoughts after waking up. Uh, in the first arc, he doesn't really build a close connection with anyone. So whenever they forget him, it's more confusing than anything. But here, he spent the last four days working with the mates. He has actively seen their attitudes towards him change as they got closer. And now they're back to acting distant. All that work that put he put in, to all, all the happiness that he had from growing that friendship, gone. And he does not take it well. There's also a little bit of time here where he questions whether the condition for his abilities have changed, which is actually a decent point. <laughs> in the first arc, it's very clear that death is the trigger, but this time it happened in his sleep, so he doesn't know. He kind of relates it back to a video game and says that maybe he missed an objective somewhere and auto-failed. He eventually settles on dying in his sleep, but it's still a valid point. From his perspective, death might not be the only trigger it is the only trigger <laughs> and i'm guessing that the anime decided that having this whole thought process would have been too confusing so they just went ahead and cut it subaru in the web novel actually names his ability to find the forbidden library he names it door breaker I'll, I'll go ahead and admit that's actually a good name for it <laughs> subaru goes through the same steps that he did the previous loop uh, he asked for a job again, and then after that, the story changes from the last loop, so we'll pick up from there. Subaru tries using his knowledge from before. He walks right up to the suit that was picked last time. He is quick to ask to be measured for tailoring, and jumps at the conclusion that he will be given a tour as soon as Ram asks him to follow. Among Us sound clip starts playing. <laughs> Subaru is the only one that remembers last loop. So he looks suspicious as fuck. It's no wonder that they're treating him different than they did before. Also, none of this is in the novels. This is anime only. The novels just skip right over all this and goes right to the next part. At the end of the day, Subaru goes to take a bath. As he's complaining that his knowledge isn't helpful, Roswell walks in. This isn't super important for the story, but it does give us this scene. And all the BL fans go wild. <laughs> it's all the fan servers you're going to get this arc, all right? <laughs> Novel uh, also adds that Roswell wears makeup because he likes to. He doesn't need to. He just likes cosmetics, apparently. In the novels, they spend a lot more time here. Roswell teaches Subaru the basics of magic. In the anime, it's done later on by Puck. I'm probably just going to skip over all of this for now then just leave magic to a video on its own. In the web novel, Subaru raps. And it sounds like he took lessons from Chica. <laughs> he just adds in a whole bunch of yo's to everything. Now, the Japanese may be better, but the English is just sad. <laughs> and this isn't even the only time he raps. He does it later on too, but that's also in the web novel, I guess. You know, I said this scene wasn't important, but after thinking about it for a little bit, I do have a theory that I want to talk about. The web novel just straight out says that Subaru is given more work than the previous loops because he kind of knows what he's doing now. I think in the first loop, both Rom and Rem were so busy helping Subaru that they couldn't help Roswell at all. 
This time, since he's not so much of a burden, they are able to help Roswell more, which helps him get done with work and is able to take a bath sooner. This kind of adds to the reasons on why this loop is different. None of this is ever outright stated, but I think it makes sense. The web novel, being more sexual, also hints that Roswell is sleeping with the maids. Not saying that he is, just saying that it is hinted at. It's also said that the bathwater is changed after every use, and Subaru is sad that he can't drink Amelia's bathwater. <laughs> the web novel is so fucking weird. Subaru gets out of the bath and walks out to find Ram. She says she's waiting to dress Roswell. Subaru says that she needs to stop spoiling him, which causes her to get angry and threaten him. He goes back to his room, and Ram stops by a little later. She states that she's going to teach him to read and write, so that she will have less work to do. In the anime, he walks out naked, but in the novels, he does not. In the novels, he goes from the baths to the changing room and then goes to leave. And then that's where he bumps into Rom. But in the anime, it's really hard to tell. But my guess is that this conversation is taking place in the changing room. I have no idea why the anime decided to change it. And this is one of the very few cases of the anime making it worse than the novels. <laughs> From here, the story is similar enough to the first loop, uh, up to the night that he supposedly died the first time. So I'm just going to speed through a lot of this. There are a few things that I do want to talk about, though. First, in the anime, Subaru still cuts his hands with a knife. He still gets bitten by the dog. So he still has bandages on his hands, but it's noticeably less. Like, you can tell how much he has improved just based on there being fewer bandages. In fact, in the uh, web novel, he's improved so much that his hands are perfectly fine. Before he gets bitten by the dog, he is worried that he is going to have to cut his hand so that he has some kind of marker for when his return by death activates. Second, they spend a good amount of time showing that Rem has an inferiority complex. Like, she sees her sister as absolutely amazing, and she is just living in her shadow. It doesn't come off as, like, angry or anything. It comes off as more of low self-esteem. And it's explained why more later in the arc, and I'll take more time to talk about it then. But it's brought up, or it's hinted at a lot, and I'm not going to talk about it every single time. <laughs> Third, the web novel brings up that Roswell has a scar on his chest, but this isn't brought up in any other version. In fact, in the anime, we can see his chest because of the uh, bath scene, and there's no scar. I have no idea what this scar is supposed to reference, and after a quick search, I couldn't really find anything. At this point, I'm just going to keep it in mind, and if it ever comes up again, then I'll talk about it more. Next is something that I missed the first time that I watched. One day, the three housekeepers are working, and Rem is caught staring at Subaru. Ram says that it's because his hair looks like shit, and Rem agrees, which I think was a lie. I didn't catch her lying the first time, but admittedly, I think it's easy to miss unless you know what happens later on in the arc. I will admit that I could be wrong on this, and that maybe she is just upset at his yee-yee-ass haircut, but I think that she's lying, and I'll explain why later. Each night, Ram helps Subaru with his reading and writing. On the fourth night, Amelia comes to help instead. She calls him out for half-assing all of his work that week, which he is forced to acknowledge. Subaru wanted things to go the same way as before, so he tried slowing down his work even though it was obvious that he could do more. He uses this topic to ask for a date. He will work hard from now on if she will go on a date with him. She agrees to the reward with the expectation that he will actually work hard. She makes the promise and leaves for the night. I feel the need to point out that Amelia is innocent. She is say-so, and she does not understand the concept of a date. She understands 
hanging out, obviously, but she doesn't understand the romantic ideas that go along with a date. When Subaru brings it up, she points out that he and Rem went on a date when they went shopping earlier. So she agrees to the date, but it doesn't mean the same thing to her as what it does to Subaru. The web novel has Subaru go to the maids to ask for the night off from studying, and they both say no. <laughs> Subaru figures that even if Amelia agrees, she will end up canceling when she finds out that he skipped out from his work, so he just goes back to his room to study. Well, he plans on studying, and he also comes up with a plan to have Rom fall asleep in his bed like she normally does, and then he'll sneak out to go find Amelia and then ask her out. That's when Amelia shows up to his room and she points out that his bed is well made and all that. And he explains that he had planned on having Rom sleep in it. And you can kind of guess how that conversation went from there. <laughs> There's another mm, nickname, I guess, that I haven't said yet. It's in every version, but it's in the web novel a little more often. EMT. It stands for Emilia Majitenchi or Amelia is seriously an angel. And yes, he does say EMT in English. <laughs> there are some other versions, uh, EMP, uh, EMF, I think, um, but they all follow the same format. And it's just him throwing out compliments. That's really all it is. Subaru sits in his room. It's the night that he might die, so he's anxious and determined to stay awake. He suddenly starts to feel lightheaded and cold. He gets up and has to hold down the need to throw up. Something's wrong. He stumbles out of the room, desperate to find help. Amelia, she will help, but her room is on the other side of the mansion. As he walks down the hall, using the wall to hold himself up, he has to stop periodically to vomit on the floor. He somehow manages to make his way up the stairs by crawling on all fours. By the time he gets to the top, he's barely able to move. Through the ringing in his ear, he hears the sound of metal chains. Something hits him in the back and sends him flying. Subaru is too weak to even feel the initial impact or feel his body bounce and slide across the floor. Lifting his head to the best of his ability, he sees his left arm is gone. His body goes into shock as blood spews from what is left of his shoulder. The metal sound returns, but Subaru isn't able to lift his head to see what it is. In an instant, Subaru's head is crushed. He wakes up in bed, screaming in pain, before he sees the two girls in front of him and realizes where he is. Death number two. <laughs> More clues this time around, but nothing that's really all that helpful just yet. Everything's pretty much the same in each version, but the, the, the only real difference is that the anime and the light novel have him freak out and flail around a little bit after seeing that his arm is missing. In the uh, web novel, he is just too drained to do anything. And unfortunately, that's it for the web novel. At least that's all it's been translated so far as of me making this. So from now on, it's just going to be anime versus light novel. After waking up and smoothing things over with the maids, Subaru goes to the Forbidden Library. He had found comfort there before in the last loop, and was in need of it again. He hypothesizes that the first loop he died in his sleep to the sickness or whatever was causing the physical weakness he was feeling. In the second loop, he was dying from the same thing before being finished off by someone else. He comes up with this conclusion while walking circles around Beatrice. She finally gets fed up with him and sends him flying out of the library. He soars through the door through the open window on the second floor, and lands in the flower bed below. He's covered in dirt when Amelia finds him and informs him that Rem had spread manure on the flowers yesterday. Puck helps to clean him off by nearly drowning him. Afterwards, Puck and Subaru have a little play fight, which causes Amelia to bust out laughing. It's a cute scene, but there is something that I want to talk about here. Subaru calls her Ameliaton, and she asks him what that means. He says it's a pet name to show how close they are, and Amelia points out that she doesn't know him. <laughs> She's not that close to him, 
Remember the timeline from her perspective. She just met him last night. This is probably the first time that they've actually sat down to have a full conversation. She's probably been around him for like an hour at most total. Subaru acts all buddy-buddy, but she just doesn't feel the same. And this is the common theme that's pointed out throughout the entire series. Now, here Puck says that Amelia doesn't have a whole lot of friends, so she does want pet names and to be close to someone, so she doesn't make a huge deal about this. Eventually, everyone ends up back in the dining hall. The same was with the previous loops. This time, instead of asking for a job, Subaru uses Amelia's idea to ask to remain as a guest at the manor. Subaru wants to use the free time to figure out the identity of the killer. Right now, Subaru thinks that the mansion was attacked and that he was just another victim. It's explained a lot better in the light novel, but he doesn't want to go around telling everybody that because he thinks that will make him look suspicious. He's just a random guy from another country and him just coming out and saying, hey, we're going to be attacked is kind of a red flag. So he wants to get information first. He tries talking to the twins, but they remain distant. So he goes to Beatrice to get information about the sickness. She informs him that there are two ways to cause someone to die by weakness. Either a curse or draining mana. Curses are rare. In fact, only a small group of shamans are known for using curses. Draining mana is also a rare ability. In the mansion, only Beatrice and Puck can do so. Subaru comments that he is low on blood and asks Beatrice not to use it on him again. This causes Beatrice to admit that she was the one who fixed his organs. Subaru still believes that Amelia had saved him, so he calls her a liar, and she responds by sending him flying out of the room, back into the flower bed. The light novel has both discussions with Beatrice happen at the same time. So he wakes up, he goes to the Forbidden Library to calm down, and he talks to Beatrice about the curse. No idea why the anime decided to separate out these scenes, but they did. Later on, Subaru is sitting in his room, studying and trying to make a plan to figure out who the killer is. He decides he'll leave the mansion on the day he is set to die so that he could observe and catch the attacker before they get to the mansion. While he's busy planning, Ram brings in T. She sits and talks with him for a bit, and he tells her a story from his homeland, the Red Oni that cried. I really debated about putting the story in here, but it honestly doesn't add all that much, so I'm skipping it. I will say that the whole Red Oni, Blue Oni thing is foreshadowing, and it's a little on the nose if you ask me. After that, they talk about one of the books that has the history of Lagunica. It's a picture book for kids, but most people do believe that it is actual history. And we'll talk more about history whenever we get more details. All that's really said now is that the kingdom was founded. At some point later, the king at the time made a covenant with the noble dragon, and now the Noble Dragon is somewhere beyond the Great Waterfall. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> the Covenant is how the Kingdom got the Dragon Tablet. Here is a map of the known world. It is uh, very much zoomed out, just so you can see everything. Uh, I don't really want to go into a whole lot of detail. I just want to kind of help put this into perspective. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a little more obvious um <laughs> and i'm struggling to trace a line if that tells you anything about my amazing art skills here <laughs> eh, close enough so this is the kingdom of lagunica uh, let me pick a different color this is the capital and that is where the first arc took place uh the mansion is around here and that's where the second arc is taking place with the town you know, somewhere nearby here. It's pretty much a flat earth. So everyone in ReZero is a flat earther. <laughs> but water runs off the edges into the abyss below. And I'm pretty sure that's what people mean when they say the great waterfall. That's just <laughs> the, the edge of the world, basically. 
Um, I think that's really all you need to know for now. I'm going to leave the links for this in the description in case you want to zoom in and see different parts of the world. In addition to the dragon story, the picture book also has a story about the witch. Story may be giving it a lot of credit. <laughs> it's four pages, and again, it's a picture book. There's not that many words per page as it is, so there's really not a lot to talk about on this. But there is one thing. In both versions, they refer to the witch as the Jealous Witch. The translation notes that I have point out that the given later themes, it's probably better to say that it's the Witch of Envy. And I 100% agree. So from now on, I'm going to try to make sure that I use the Witch of Envy so that there's no confusion. It's the last day, the day that Subaru might die again. He continues with his plan to leave and says his goodbyes to everyone in the mansion. After he gets a little ways down the road, he cuts into the forest and up a cliff that has a good overlook of the mansion. He pulls out a knife stolen from the kitchen and sits by a rock to wait until nightfall. It's a lot more clear in the light novel, but he expects this to be a suicide mission. He even says that he'll use the knife on himself if he needs to. This is the first time that we've seen him have these kinds of thoughts and he's still on the fence about whether or not he he can even do something like that. While he's sitting there, he says to himself, even if no one else remembers, you remember. And that's him trying to calm himself down because he knows that he's probably going to die and have to restart everything. Both versions point out that uh, Rem didn't go shopping this loop, which is hint for the future. Subaru told them that he was going to be leaving, so there was no reason for them to get extra food and no reason for them to go to town at all. And because of that, some important events got skipped. As the sun sets, he gets lost in thought, reminiscing on the memories he has made and hoping that this time he will make it through. His thoughts are cut short as a metal ball comes flying at his head. He ducks just in time as a spike on the ball grazes his cheek and he falls off the cliff. But Subaru had planned on this. He had a rope tied around him and a nearby tree, which he used to catch himself before hitting the ground. He had seen the weapon and knew the attacker was nearby. In the light novel, he talks through his plan a little more. He wants information, and he thinks that knowing the weapon will help him give a better warning to the people in the mansion. Knowing the person who's attacking would be better, but naturally Subaru doesn't want to die, so he takes what he can get and he runs back to the mansion. He runs off a short distance, straight into a cliff face. He is cornered. Not wanting to give up, he takes off his jacket, ready to use it as a net. The spiked ball comes racing through the trees. Subaru is able to deflect it using his jacket and it gets stuck in the cliff. Now that the attacker has lost their weapon, Subaru grabs the chain and waits for them to come forward. A small silhouette appears in the dark as they slowly walk closer. Rim steps into the light, holding the handle of the weapon that had been used against Subaru. God damn, I remember the first time I saw this twist. <laughs> After re-watching and re-reading, there are some hints, but nothing that would have really given it away, unless you just already knew what was going to happen. The metal sounds from her flail match the metal sounds from the last loop, so it's pretty much guaranteed that she's the killer. During this time, he tries to find out some information by asking if uh, Ram and Roswell know what she's doing. She pretty much says that Ram doesn't know anything and that she's doing this for Roswell's sake. So he probably doesn't know, but then again, it's always a debate on what Roswell knows and what he doesn't know. Now the next section is full of emotion and it's done really well in the anime. I am not a voice actor, <laughs> so it's probably not going to be good, but I'm going to try. Subaru's head is spinning. He uses the flash on his phone to blind her. He pushes her over as he runs away, but where could he go? Could he run back to the mansion? Would he even be safe there? He doesn't make it far enough to even matter. A blade of wind shoots towards him and slices off a leg at the knee. 
He falls, spraying blood all over the ground and crying out in pain. Rem walks over and heals the leg to stop the bleeding. If you die so easily, I can't get any information out of you. She holds up the chain from her flail and stares down at him. Are you a member of a rival faction? My heart belongs to Emiliaton, for his sentence is cut short as the metal chain runs along his back like a whip. He screams in pain, but Rem does not let up. Who hired you, and for what conditions? Emiliaton smile, and it was priced again. The chains dig into his skin, sending more blood flying. Are you affiliated with the witch's cult? The witch's cult? I don't even know what that is. Don't play dumb. Your bold-faced lies can only take you so far when the witch's smell lies thickly upon you. Watching you converse with my sister, I felt that I would go mad with anger. Someone associated with the one who caused my sister so much agony, boldly encroaching on the place where she and I belong. I couldn't bear it any longer, even if my sister acts friendly and pretends to care for you. I don't cut my hands when I peel vegetables anymore. I can read and write now, even if it's just simple stuff. I kept my word and studied. I was able to read those fairy tales, thanks to you two. What are you talking about? The things that you guys have given me. I have no memory of that. Why? Why don't you remember? Why do you all keep leaving me behind? What did I do to you? What am I supposed to do? What did I do wrong? Why do you all hate me so much? All this time, I've really liked both of- Wind cuts Subaru's throat, and he falls. The third death. All right. Before I get into this story, I'm going to go over the differences since it's a short list. The only real difference is the light novel has the torture go on for longer. She asks him a question, she hits him when she doesn't like the answer, and then she heals him so that she can keep going. It kind of explains the outburst a little bit more because by this point he is pretty close to being mentally broken. As far as the story goes, there's three big things that I want to talk about. First being the smell. This is the first time that it's brought up, but some people can sense the witch on Subaru. Rem says that not only can she smell it, but it is thick. Uh, I think it said at some point later that every time that Subaru uses the return by death, that the smell gets worse. So he in the first arc, he had died three times. And in this arc, up to this point, he has died twice. So the smell is pretty strong. And it reminds her of people that she hates. So naturally, she wants to make sure that everyone that she knows is safe uh, from the witch cult. But she also just really fucking hates him. That's why she didn't even give him a chance to say anything during the last loop. She just wanted to kill him. So I had an epiphany while editing, and I'm just going to insert my idea here. The first time that Rem killed Subaru, she had no idea what was happening. From her perspective, Subaru, someone that she was already suspicious of, was trying to sneak over to Amelia's room late at night, or maybe even Roswell's room. I'm not sure where his room's at. So she basically saw a threat and decided to kill him before he could do anything. That makes the most sense, and I'm a little sad that it took me this long to make those connections. This also explains why she was staring at him during the last loop. She can sense the witch on him, so she's already suspicious of him. Uh, but seeing him talk to Ram made her angry. Uh, she hides it, of course, but when she's called out on staring, she takes the easy way out and just says that it's about his hair. At least that's my theory. I'll point out that Ram doesn't sense the witch due to factors that will be talked about later on. Rem senses it, so she is trying to deal with it before it becomes a problem for her sister or for Roswell. Next point I'm glad that they brought up his improvement. 
in the first loop, he would cut up his hands and he couldn't read. Now he's able to use a knife without fucking up his hands. And he's been studying for since the beginning of last loop, which gives him eight days at most. And he's able to read. Granted, it's not much, but still, eight days is still pretty impressive. Um, and he's really only making so much improvement because of Ram and Rim. And I'm glad that he recognizes that and points it out. All right. Last thing that I want to talk about is Subaru himself. Here, he is stupid. He questions why they don't remember him when he already knows why. He knows how Return by Death works. If he put even a little bit of thought into it, he wouldn't be bringing all of this up. And honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. I think this makes him a better protagonist. He's not perfect. He's not strong, physically or mentally. He's just a guy doing the best he can. He's frustrated and still in shock over the whole situation. Probably mentally broken from the torture. And this is probably how a normal person would react if they were in that same situation. When I first started watching, I was not a fan of Subaru. I would watch scenes like this and get frustrated because I had high expectations from other isekais. But Subaru's not overpowered. Hell, he's barely even useful. And the more that I watch, the more I realize that's kind of the point. The story isn't about watching an OP protagonist win at everything. It's about the slow, painful steps forward that most people would have to take if they were in that same situation. Subaru can still be fucking annoying sometimes, but I've cut him a lot of slack since the first time that I started watching. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call it there for now. I'll have the next video out in a few weeks. See ya.